Hello, welcome to Web of Stories. My name is Melinda and I am not in my usual place. I am not in Boring Corner. I'm actually in front of my Keeper bookshelf. No, this is not a bookshelf tour. And I'd like to say I have a really great reason for being here, which I have a very valid reason for being here, but it's not a very good reason. And that is uh, this morning I tweaked my back and it hurts to sit for too long. So I am doing this standing up. And uh, I thought if I'm gonna stand up, I might as well stand up in front of books. Um, I had to get the big tripod out for this. So lighting is not great. Hopefully the sound's okay, but we're going to do this because I'm doing my weekly wrap up. So yeah, no vlog this week because nothing interesting happened. So there was no reason to do a, a vlog <laughs> other than me tweaking my back this morning, which, um, so it is, we're getting there. It's almost June. It's, I'm doing this on May 31st. I'm actually filming a lot of, or I'll, I think three videos today. So um, you'll see this bookshelf. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll move this around to different parts. I don't know. Anyway, um, but today I'm doing my weekly wrap up. Um, I had a pretty good reading, reading week. Nothing really outside of reading to report to you. Oh, except my no buy challenge. I didn't update last week um, my no buy challenge because I, ch I decide each week if I'm going to do no buy or not. And last week I did no buy. I just forgot to mention it. Um, but then I did my my May haul video, which was big. Um, that's already up, so you can see it. Um, but I did want to tell you that I had decided that this week, or maybe next week, depending on when Book of the Month dropped at Selections, I was going to allow myself to choose one book if there was something there that interested me. And um, there was. Uh, the Selections dropped yesterday. And it's the one by Marjan, I can't remember the exact title, but it's by Marjan Kamali. She wrote The Stationery Shop or The Stationery Shop of Tehran, depending on where you are, because it's two different titles, depending on where you are. So yes, I allowed myself that, and that's fine. As for next week, the thing coming up next week is the Indie Press List. And um, I am going to allow myself to get a book from there, but only if I am really, really interested in it. And it's not one that I can get easily at the library. So there might be a purchase next week. There might not. We'll see. I will tell you that I have two back orders coming in next week. So it's even though I'm doing this no buy thing, um, there's still books coming in. <laughs> so that. The other thing I wanted to mention is I am so woefully behind in answering comments. So if you've left me, the cat is jumping around. <laughs> If you've left me comments and I haven't got back to you, it's because I, I just am behind and I'm working on it. Um, I'm going to see how much progress I can make on that um, through this coming week. And if I can't make good progress on it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the following off week off for making videos to give myself a little bit of leeway when aren't when there aren't as many new comments coming in. But we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, I had an interesting reading week. So the first thing that happened is that I DNF'd a book. I DNF The Awakening by Nora Roberts. Um, I couldn't do it. I made it a little over 50% of the way in this book. I could not do it. Um, so I'm reading, I was <laughs> reading this to participate in the Book Cougars uh, read-along discussion because they're this is their year of romance. And um, I am still planning to go to the discussion as a spectator and see what other people think, but this was not a book for me. Um, I don't want to say that it's an anti-romance thing. I will say, and I was I was chatting in comments with Sarah at Roadworthy about this yesterday, that romance really only seems to work for me when it's offering me something that I need, if that makes sense. For example, in 2017, I needed to know things were going to end okay. So I needed to read books that guaranteed me a, a good ending, which romance does that. Um... And I don't really have a need for romance for that right now, which is probably why I'm having trouble with it. Now, as for this book, oh, my husband's coming down. I did not plan timing well. He's going to be here to make noise. Sorry. Um, as for this particular book, why I DNF'd it, it's not because it was a romance. Um, and I, it's actually not because it's like, I don't know if it's actually romantic but it's kind of in that direction. I, I was afraid that would be why it wasn't successful for me. That actually wasn't it. I just found problems in it. Um... You know, the, the, the trope, it was very tropey. The main character, of course, everything was going wrong for her, but then she was a super special snowflake. And I'm like, really? And, um, yeah, it, like every day, she would go through, Lauren Roberts would go through what this character did every day. If I had to hear one more time about this character streaming a workout every morning, I was, I was done. Um, and then we get to the part where there's 
another worldly thing and people have powers, but they're never explained. And they're never explained in a way that I think needs an explanation. And I just, I couldn't. I got to the point, um, it wasn't any one thing that really set me off on this. Um, but I was getting to the point, this book's on my Kindle. I have it out from the Multnomah County Library on my Kindle. And, um, sorry, my nose is itchy. I got to the point where I was looking at my Kindle thinking, I don't want to pick you up. I don't want to pick you up. And then I was like, I don't want to read because I'm going to have to eventually read that book. And that's not a good place to be. And so I said, I need to just not, I need to, to cut, cut on this book. We're done. And so, uh, yeah. Now, I am going to continue to try romance throughout this year. Um, I don't know what the next selection is. They haven't announced that yet. Um, I don't even know if they've decided on it yet. But um, yeah, this, this one was not one that worked for me. And I, you know, Nora Roberts has quite a number of books. And I, it's not fair to read half of one of her books and say she's not an author for me. So I'm not going to go so far to say that. But I will say this book doesn't make me want to try Nora Roberts again. Um, it just wasn't for me. So there was that. And I'm kind of stacking this because I'm going to get to something a little later and it kind of builds on itself. So I have my list here. Make sure I get this in the right order. The next book I read was And Then She Fell by Alicia Elliott. This was longlisted. I don't believe it made the shortlist, but it was longlisted for the Women's Prize. And I had heard some sort of conflicting things about this book. Some people really liked it. Some people didn't really like it. Um, what finally kind of like said, yes, I want to read it was Caitlin and Bandy's books. Um, and hers was even a little bit tempered, but she, she what she said about the book still made me want to read it. Um, and I am going to have to talk with some mild spoilers about this book. So what I will do is I will put spoiler down on the bottom there and I will timestamp for when I quit talking about it. So if you don't want those there, as I said, these are mild spoilers, I think. So you decide. Sorry for that little jump there. I had to go tend to my husband, but we're back and we're spoilery. So the deal with this book is the main character, Alice, um, she's clearly going through postpartum psychosis. Um, and that's sort of, and it feeds, there's other issues. Like there's a lot of indigenous, um, folklore, some traditions in there. There's, um, microaggressions. There's a lot of things going on there, but the big thing is that she's going through postpartum psychosis and there are some other mental health issues sort of involved in it. So my personal situation is that after the birth of my second child, after my son, I dealt with some postpartum anxiety, which is like the littlest sister to postpartum psychosis. So obviously I was nowhere near where she was. <laughs> but because of that, I was able to relate to this book in a way that I didn't expect. And this book spoke to me in a way that I that few books probably could. And so that really made this book a success for me. I was very interested to see what people who didn't go through that thought. And um, I think yesterday or maybe the day before, I saw Camilla at Hasty Books talk about it and she has not gone through the same situation. And so, yeah, she didn't have the same experience and I understand it. So this is not a book that I would really, I enjoyed it. I gave it an, I gave it an A. I would not, recommend it though for just about anybody because first of all I think if you don't have I mean I don't want to say that you can't relate to it if you haven't gone through something like this but you might not be able to there's that possibility but also if you have gone through something to this it might be too much okay so I'm back I'm done with the spoilers I'm sorry for the jump I think my husband might be done now walking in front of the camera <laughs> he's trimming roses and stuff. But anyway, so those are my thoughts on And Then She Fell, if you chose to listen to them. So there was that. That was a very, that was a, that was a read that really had a personal effect on me. And I'm sorry, I'm going to, I'm going to choose my camera just a little bit more here. Sorry. I'm not used to using this particular tripod. Okay. So there was that. And then the next book I read is for my um, library book, book uh, club. And we're discussing tomorrow, we're going to tomorrow, which will be today if you watch this on the day it's released. Days Without End by Sebastian Barry. So this is historical fiction. It is the story of two men, um, kind of before the Civil War, leading into the Civil War. The two men have a relationship. Um, yeah, this is probably a good book for June for many reasons. Uh, Pride being one of them. But I, I don't want to say it's like, it's interesting because... 
And I do know that like our sort of current ideas around um, same sex relationships are not ones that we've had for a long time. And in the 19th century, people saw that a little bit differently. Um, there's also issues about one of the characters I you could make an argument about could be trans actually. Um, so that was all really interesting and I thought it was really well done. It was a very lovely love story. Um, it, I heard from someone in my book group that this is great on audio and having read it in print, <laughs> I would say yes, it is probably excellent on audio just because the prose is very much like someone talking to you and telling you what's going on. Um, the first part of the book gave me some really heavy <laughs> Oregon Trail, the game, Oregon Trail vibes, which was kind of fun. There's a lot of brutality towards Native Americans in here, so there's that. I had an issue with this book, though, and it's, it, it really bugged me, and I couldn't put my finger on it. And um, and I might be selling Sebastian Berry short on this. I'm going to be honest about that. Like, this may what I'm saying may not be fair. But there is these two men sort of adopt um, an indigenous girl who'd been taken from her tribe and then raised by the major's daughter. This is not really a spoiler. This is in the um, this the summary of the book. And I felt, again, I could be not being fair on this. I felt that Sebastian Berry not being an American may have missed a lot of nuance, I guess, on this because it raised a lot of questions for me. And uh, I found myself really conflicted in a lot of ways about it that weren't in ways any way addressed in this book. Um, yeah, and I just kind of, I kind of came to the point where I'm like, I think that like if this book were, I'm sorry, cause the light, no, sorry, this is not a great place to film. Um, I felt like an American who had written this book would have at least discussed that differently. Um, so yeah, I don't know if I'm expressing that well, and I don't know if I'm being fair to Sebastian Barry because that was my only issue with this book. Um, we'll see what my book club thought about it when we discuss it. Okay, so this is where we're gonna get to the next thing where I have to talk a little bit about popcorn thrillers. And I'm gonna try my technical abilities here. We're gonna try to put some gifs in with this. So I had just DNF'd a book that almost put me in a huge slump, read a book that really shook me to the core, and read a book that I had some really conflicted feelings about. So I had like some kind of heavy duty reading experiences kind of all at once or in a very short period of time. And I needed something different. I needed a book that would do all the heavy lifting for me. And um, that's where the term popcorn thriller comes in. Now I am accepting this, this genre of a thing, but I, I'm redefining it for myself because the best way I can do this is with GIFs. So previously, when I heard popcorn thriller, this was the GIF I talked, of, I thought of. Okay, we'll see. We'll see if I got the timing right on that. And I realized reading my next book that that to me is not a popcorn thriller. That is the wrong GIF for a popcorn thriller. This is the GIF that describes a popcorn thriller for me. So I'm clearly I needed something else, and that book came in this, The Innocent Angels by Alison Belsham. So I just got this this month, which means I've read it this month, which means I don't have to count it towards my TBR. That was not the case when I did my uh, my book haul video, so I can change my numbers on my spreadsheet. But this is the third book in a series. I just realized I'm crooked. I'm so sorry. I'm not even gonna try to fix it at this point. A third book in a series, the Detective Lexi Bennett series. The first book is The Girls on Chalk Hill, and the second book is The Girls Last Cry. I've really enjoyed it. All three books are great. It's a series. I said in my book haul, this is not available in the United States. After I filmed that, I realized that I found out that wasn't exactly true. The entire series is currently available on Kindle Unlimited. Now, I didn't get it through Kindle Unlimited. I ordered it from Blackwell's. And I'm going to be honest, I would rather give Blackwell's $15 for a print copy than Amazon $4 for an ebook. That's just the way I am. And so I have no problems ordering this from Blackwell's. And I'll be honest, future things, I'm going to do the same thing. <laughs> I'm not going to get, I don't have Kindle Unlimited and I'm not going to buy books from Amazon, uh, Kindle books from Amazon. Anyway, this book. So the best way I can describe the experience of reading this book is many years ago, I'm going to put the book down because I'm like waving it around. Uh, many years ago, um, 
when I was like watching television in a way that commercials were still a thing and shows, like I was watching shows. I wasn't watching everything streaming whenever I wanted to, but it's many years ago. I was watching a show and I can't remember what show it is and it's not important. What is important is right after this show, Law & Order SVU came on. <laughs> And it came on almost like immediately when the show was over. I don't even think there was a commercial between the two. And I knew that if I did not turn the television off before that sound, and you know what sound that is. If I didn't turn it off before then, I was sucked in for another hour. <laughs> now, Law & Order SVU is not a show I would go out to watch. It's not. It was not a regular viewing show for me, but as soon as it started, I, I was in. I was in, and it's not... I mean, I'm not a regular viewer of that show, but it never seemed to me a show where you had to watch it in any sort of order. It seemed to, each episode seemed fairly well contained. So yeah, I was just like, that was it, law and order. That is how it felt reading this book. As soon as I started, I was in and I was going. Um, these are really strong, very procedural. So if you don't like police procedurals, these are not for you. This is a very procedural book. Um, the author clearly knows the ins and outs of the British police system. I assume she does. I mean, it doesn't, nothing rings really bizarre, rings wrong to me. Um, so there is a lot of like how things work in law enforcement and police, which doesn't, this doesn't appeal to everyone and that's fine. Um, in the first two books, it kind of drove me crazy because Lexi Bennett, the main character, would make these really stupid decisions. And they and it didn't bother me as much as it does in other books where people make stupid decisions because in the previous two books, she'd get called out for making the stupid decision. Everyone would be like, don't do that, you're an idiot. And in this book, she does make a stupid <laughs> decision, but it's it's not really about her job. It's And this is not a spoiler, it's that she's running a 5K and she pulls a muscle and she doesn't go to the doctor about it. That's her stupid decision. Uh, <laughs> so I was fine with that stupid decision. Um, these books are a lot of psychological crime, which seems like it weird that that worked so well for me after and then she fell, but it did. Um, but again, this is a book, It's I don't wanna say I don't have to think about it because that's not fair. What it is, is it does the heavy lifting for me. I am there, my, my contribution to this book is just to read it. I, you know, and it does the rest of the work for me. I don't always like that in books, but there are times when I really do and I really needed it and I really needed it with this one. I gave this uh, an A. I think I may have given all the books in this series an A. Um, they're just kind of enjoyable. They're what I need at certain points in time. I will definitely be continuing on with this series. Um, I will say if police procedurals with lots of psychological crime are a thing that you like, look into this. And if you're in the United States, you can get it on KU or you can order it from Blackwell's and not get it from Amazon. Okay, <laughs> there was that. And then I finished one more book this week. Um, and this was a book that I was not planning to read in May, but um, I had a little time at the end of the month. So I decided I was gonna read my June Agatha Christie book in May because it doesn't really fit in with, you know, Big Book Summer or Read Historical Fiction 2024 or June on the Range. So I thought, well, I'm just gonna fit it in in May and get it out of the way. And that was Sad Cypress by Agatha Christie. I really enjoyed this book. It was very, um, it was very different from other Agatha Christie's that I had read. There was a strong courtroom element to it. Um, we also seem to get much more into the characters, which I really liked. Um, as far as a mystery goes, I will say, Maybe the mystery wasn't quite as successful for two reasons. One is I, I figured out pretty quickly who did it. And that's not usually the case with Agatha Christie. And the second thing is, I'm not sure Agatha Christie always played fair with this one. But as a novel, I thought it was fantastic. Um, and so maybe that's just how I have to look at this book is as a novel and not a mystery because that's, that's the way it works. Um, I really enjoyed my time reading this book. I read it in two days, which does, even for Agatha Christie books, usually doesn't happen. I also really like this cover. I think this is like the perfect cover for this book. Um, this is not a book I would say, if you are starting Agatha Christie, I would start with because it is so different from her other, or at least her other Hercule Poirot books. This is an Hercule Poirot book. Um, but it is very enjoyable if you are already kind of familiar with the character and how she does or kill Poirot. Um, and as I said, she goes a lot more into character on this one, which I really liked.
So that was my reading week. As always, I'm going to put everything that I am reading down below. I'm not just, I'm not going to run through it in the video, um, but you can just read it down below. And uh, yeah, as I said, I bought a book this week, but that was allowed. That was not an impulse buy. And we'll see if I buy one next week. Um, the door is open for me to do that. I just am not sure I'm going to or not. We'll see. Anyway, thank you very much. I'm sorry the lighting and the video and the weird jumps and all that was going on here. Um, it is what it is. <laughs> so thank you very much. Like, subscribe, join my Discord, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.